As soon as the Super Mario series was born, power-ups played a role in it. Almost every title has them, except for Super Mario Odyssey, and maybe some others. But aside from those, they are seen all the time. And one that was added quite recently was the Super Bell, which is even going to return in Super Mario Maker 2 in some interesting ways. For example, Meowser. But where does this power-up even come from, and how did it evolve in terms of use, gameplay, design, and story? Well, let's find out. Now, all of this started a couple of years ago in the year 2013, a time when a Nintendo Switch didn't even exist as a concept, and the main console that you could get was a Wii U. For this console, they had to bring out a new Super Mario game, otherwise it would never sell. And so Super Mario 3D World was created, which had a bit of a co-op party game feel to it. And in order to spice up the gameplay, they had to introduce a new special power-up as well. The Super Bell, a golden striped bell with beady eyes. When obtained, you transform into a cat form of yourself, allowing you to slide into enemies, pounce in mid-air, and climb up walls and goal poles. But there's also another power-up called the Lucky Bell, which is similar, but when you ground pound, you turn into an invincible lucky cat statue and earn bonus coins when falling. Now, the idea behind this power-up is actually quite useful. You're in a 3D space, and being able to climb would be useful in such a world. And so, they made a power-up based on it. And to be honest, it works extremely well. You can hide secrets in out-of-reach places, which forces the player to explore the levels. This makes it more interesting for sure. It's not just going from A to B. There are more side missions now that require you to look around the level, because if you don't, then you don't get all the green stars. All of this was also turned into some sort of game in a game, because you were competing with each other for points so that you would be crowned the winner at the end of the course. So this new power-up that allowed you to run on all fours incredibly fast, skill any mountain or obstacle, and jump down at high speed, is a perfect fit for all of this. A versatile and fast form so you can collect as many green stars and coins as possible before any of your friends even get the chance to do so. But this power-up actually has a real-world origin as well, based on something seen in Japanese culture. The Maneki Niko, or in English, the Beckoning Cat. This is a common Japanese figurine, which is often believed to bring good luck to the owner. In modern times, they are usually made of ceramic or plastic, and it's depicted as a cat beckoning with an upright paw. Now, if you compare these with the statue form that Mario gets in a special lucky cat form, then you can see that they're basically the same. Which is a cool reference. Sadly, enough, this whole statue form doesn't really add anything new to the game. Think of Tanuki Mario, for example. The only difference between this new type and that one is the coins that you get when falling down, and of course the different design. However, it doesn't end here, because just like in Super Mario 3D Land with the super leaves, enemies can also use these bells. And so we see a lot of new types in this game based on the new power-up, like Cat Goombas who attack by jumping and then diving down. And the great thing is, they sometimes even drop a super bell when defeated. There are even some bullet bill forms that became cat types, but they don't really do anything new though. However, there's one enemy in the game that becomes a lot more more interesting thanks to this new form, Bowser, who becomes Meowser. Now the design for this form is amazing and it might even be my favorite Bowser design ever seen in the series. Turning into some sort of tiger form of his normal self, he looks ferocious, which is certainly the best part about it. He uses this special form in the final battle of the game, but all you see him do is climb and try to slash at you with his claws. It isn't really a battle, but actually some sort of upward auto-scroller where he chases you and tries to stop you from reaching the top where there is a POW block. This is okay for a boss fight, but to be honest, I would have liked to see a one-on-one -on -one fight between Mario and Meowser. But what happened to the power-up after Super Mario 3D World? They don't always return after all. For example, the hammer and the frog suit, which were only seen in one game. Well, they can be seen again in Captain Toad Treasure Tracker since Super Bell Hill is also seen. However, the item is not obtainable in the main game. So while enemies like Cat Goombas come back, it isn't the same as in Super Mario 3D World. But they did return. However, it's yet again a disappointingly small role in a spin-off game. 
in Mario Kart 8, the Super Bell is the emblem of the Bell Cup and a track called Super Bell Subway. This was a part of the Animal Crossing X Mario Kart 8 downloadable content pack for 2015, which is also a part of the deluxe version. And of course, some cat versions of certain characters also ended up in the game, which is probably the best thing that came out of this aside from the new track. And now we arrive at the current day, where this power-up finally got a big and new role in a main series game. I'm talking about... But Wily, what about Super Mario Odyssey and the first Super Mario Maker? They were seen there as well! Yeah, yeah, that's true, but it wasn't anything special at all. Some little hidden sprites of Cat Mario and the others. It's just cosmetic, and some might give you a small reward, but that's it. In Super Mario Odyssey, these sprites were hidden and will give you some coins if you hit them with Cappy. And in the first Mario Maker, they are seen as mystery mushroom costumes, which could have been a fun little hint back when the game came out. This Mario form plays a big role in the sequel of this game after all, so maybe they have been planning this for a long time. There are even courses named after them, which you needed to beat in order to unlock this look. Now, these levels don't really have anything to do with the actual power-up, since they were tied to some sort of weird puppet show that Nintendo used to do on their YouTube channel. And if you look at that stuff once, you will be just as confused as I am. Hi everyone. Hi everyone, I'm Cat Mario, one of your hosts for the Playing Together show. And I'm Tiny So Tiny. But in general, none of this really mattered and Nintendo only did this as a fun easter egg referencing something from an older game, most likely. But the thing I want to look at and talk about is the power-up appearing in Super Mario Maker 2 for the Nintendo Switch, which is coming soon! This is the Super Bell's debut in a 2D game after all, which changes a lot. In this game, the Super Mario 3D World style of levels was introduced, and thanks to that, the power-up is now in the game. Luigi and Toadette are also shown wearing the cat suit in the game's group art, so apparently all characters can use it, and these new heroes are also in the game. And another character that is seen using this power-up is Bowser. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Meowser makes a return. Personally, I'm extremely excited for this, because now we can use him in this form to create amazing boss battle levels. Mario versus Meowser, and this time it's an actual fight. And I bet he has the same types of moves as the other cat enemies, making him a faster and more agile version of his normal self, which would offer a great challenge. Although the only thing we have seen him do so far is stand there on all four shooting fireballs, and most likely swiping with his claws at you once you come close. So this probably means that you can combine this power up with other enemies as well, and it might even be that we can do it with more of them than we saw in the Wii U title. This would open the door to a ton of cool new enemy variations. Just imagine flying enemies that could come diving down out of nowhere, similar to Cat Mario's pounce attack. Now, when it comes to its powers, nothing has changed though. He can still climb up walls, pounce while in the air, and perform claw swipes. In general, the power-up didn't really change. They just gave you the option to use it in a level builder game now. However, one other thing is different. The world went from 3D to 2D, which is a huge difference. The climbing, for example. In a 3D world, this can be used for exploring and every now and then to get over an obstacle. However, in a 2D game, you can't really use it for exploring since you will go from left to right anyway, and any obstacle you come across can be scaled now. It could probably work, but nowhere near as well as it did in Super Mario 3D World. In such a semi-open 3D world, there are just a lot of places you can hide stuff that would require the cat form. So personally, I'm quite curious how they will solve that. One thing that becomes more interesting though is the pounce, because in 2D you don't have to worry about the direction you're facing, because you just jump and look straight ahead to dive forward. The thing that's more important in this game is the angle that you dive at, because this could mean falling in the void or hitting the flagpole. In a 2D level maker like Super Mario Maker, this can be used to make some amazing levels where you pounce from one platform to another all the way to the finish line. In my opinion, this would be quite a cool idea, and I think I will do a video on that, my level building ideas. Be sure to subscribe for that so you won't miss it. However, aside from that, it will be a big difference using this power up in 2D instead of 3D. And this is where our story ends. All we can do now is wait and see what will happen in Super Mario Maker 2, because I bet a ton of people will come up with some pretty cool level ideas. 
Thanks for watching everybody, I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell button. YouTube has been messing up recently with notifications. Also, like this video and comment. This voiceover was hell, I hate voiceovering. I'm dyslectic, this is torture.